Hey everyone, board certified dermatologist and acne and rosacea expert here. Today in this video, I wanna talk about how we put things together, how we build a regimen for acne and rosacea, go through some of the key steps to doing this successfully, and some of the common pitfalls that I see in my practice. I wanna start with what's the order in which we should use our products. And for me, the general high level approach is go from thinnest to thickest. So start with the washes, then serums and toners and gels, then things like creams and ointments, and to go in that kind of general order. Now also when we're doing this, it's important to try to use like and like-like products. So use creams together, use ointments together, use gels and water-based products together. And we'll get into why this is important later, but when you mix products that are in different vehicles, that are in different bases, sometimes they're more likely to be incompatible with each other and lead to issues like pilling. In addition, there are some products that just simply shouldn't go together. Benzoyl peroxide and tretinoin is a classic example. Benzoyl peroxide inactivates tretinoin. So if we use them at the same time together, we're not gonna get those benefits from our tretinoin or for some of our other retinols. However, a lot of newer retinoids like adapalene, tazeratine, and others can be compatible with benzoyl peroxide. So that's less of an issue. Similarly, tretinoin, we have to be careful about using in the morning because the sun inactivates tretinoin. So our retinoids and our retinols are often best used at night, though there are some exceptions. For instance, adapalene is really fine to use in the morning. It's not inactivated by the sun. Another common incompatible combination is dapsone and benzoyl peroxide. If you mix these together, it leads to the dapsone becoming this orange color on the skin. That is not a fun thing to have happen. You can just brush it off if it does, it's not a big deal, but it's something that we don't wanna be doing. So dapsone and benzoyl peroxide have to be separated from each other when we're using them, just like benzoyl peroxide and tretinoin. Now next I wanna talk about a common issue that we run into with our skincare routine, which is pilling. This is where products will kind of ball up on the skin, kind of like what pilling looks like on a sweater, that's where the name comes from. And there's several things that can lead to pilling occurring. One of the most common reasons we get pilling is just simply using too much product. This can also lead to irritation as well for using products like retinoids. You really don't need very much product when it comes to our skincare routine. It's just a very thin layer, just a pea-sized amount is often sufficient for most things. I like to think about it like very lightly buttering toast. We're not frosting a cake here. You do not need very much product for almost anything you're using in your skincare routine. In addition to using too much of a product, sometimes we can have just too many products. Our skin routine is too complicated. And for me, I love to simplify, to think about what are the high value products in our skin routine. There are some other videos we have on acne and rosacea where we go through what are the most valuable products to use. So here really trying to simplify, trying to focus on what are the highest value things to avoid using too much together and leading to pilling. We can also try to compound products together where we have something that has a couple in one to help with this issue. A common way to do this is a lot of people want to have niacinamide in their skincare routine. Well, niacinamide is in tons of moisturizers and sunscreens. So rather than using a niacinamide serum or a specific dedicated niacinamide product, instead look for a sunscreen or moisturizer that has niacinamide in it, and then you've got it in your skincare routine and you've simplified your regimen. Another situation that can lead to pilling is using a silicone product and then putting a water-based product or other skincare cream on top of that. And silicone, they feel really nice on the skin, they're nice and hydrating, but sometimes if we use these and don't give them sufficient time to dry and be absorbed in the skin and put something else on top of it that's more water-based and can be incompatible with it, or even oil-based, that can lead to issues with pilling. Going back to my earlier point about using light products with other similar products, we really don't wanna mix oil-based products with water and alcohol-based products because these are gonna be incompatible with each other and cause pilling. So if we're using something like a gel or a water-based product, we wanna really let that dry in before we use a cream or ointment on top of that. And so that again goes to trying to simplify your routine. If you have less things, you're gonna have less issues of running into this. But if you do have oil and water-based products, you wanna make sure that you're separating them in your routine and giving them sufficient time to dry into the skin. And then finally, oily skin itself can sometimes lead to an issue with pilling. And similarly to oil products with gel and alcohol and water-based products leading to pilling, just people who have oily skin sometimes can have challenges with pilling with a variety of products. And we'll cover oily skin in other videos on the channel, but one simple way that you can try to address oily skin is to use a salicylic-based product, whether it's a wash or toner, that salicylic acid is gonna help break up the oils in the skin, help remove some of that oiliness, which is gonna help prevent pilling related to it. Well, I hope you found this video helpful. If you have, make sure to give it a like. 
and to subscribe to her channel for more acne and rosacea related content. Please let me know what you think in the comments and ask me about acne.